exciting stuff happening today. Not only am I going to announce the winners of the commenters, the last two winners, I decided to do two winners. One's, one guy's going to win some seeds, and one lucky person is going to win the 288 tape measure. So join us today for compost tea, the worm, pH in your water, a sneak peek at the best tomato blossoms Bob has ever had in his life. Fingers crossed, hoping for no black rot this year. Join us. July 31st, meet the worm. This is my tomato, Chris Kanensky, the current Michigan state record tomato holder, tells me this has eight to, eight to 10 pound potential. And I can see, you can see that's one big tomato on the left, which probably could go four or five pounds. And then you have one, two, two more that could probably go two to three pounds. So you can see the potential there. And then there's a little guy on the far right probably going to be another pound anyways and I have my backup here's the backup tomato the backup tomato looks like at least a triple one two three you can see if each one of those goes two to three pounds a piece there's six to eight pound potential and there's actually a fourth little one forming on the left question is will they all form evenly this is what they tell me so there you go. There's the update. July 31st. Stay tuned for August as this progresses. This tomato should grow up till Labor Day before it matures. So we got a whole month of growth in front of us. So please join us for that. And uh, that's the worm. I've decided to name it the worm, the horn worm. I mentioned earlier, a couple videos ago, that well, my pumpkin wasn't in the best position, and I was okay with that. I'll do what I gotta do to move it. And now it's time. My neighbor, Ron, across the street had this great little strap. Not sure yet if it'll work, but I told him, I said, I need a really short come along because I don't have a lot of room. So we're gonna try it. Now I wrapped this sheet around here. I was a little nervous with the metal, this metal against the pumpkin. I said, oh, I gotta have a sheet. Hopefully I didn't scratch her up. But what we have here, is the pumpkin it's not kinked yet i'm not going to wait for it to kink i don't want to do any damage it's already slowed down i believe due to the heat and the condition of the plants a little rough it's taken on i think the josiah brant theory taking on too much nitrogen to try to defend itself against the heat the extreme heat and here we go let me move some leaves so there we are if we get a good look at that so i can show you after we move it I'm gonna try to pull some of that curve out. It's starting to, it's starting to grow forward. The pumpkin's gonna grow forward and basically kink itself. You can see right down there, that's where it's gonna kink, right down there under that pot bottle. So let's see if we can take that out. Or if disaster sets in and we'll have a Bubba's dumbest home video. Okay, here we go crankety crank and I hope this metal doesn't come apart this is my only concern maybe I should wrap some duct tape around that right there if that's gonna okay it's not doing no hardship it's not bearing against the fruit so let's give her a shot oh she's pulling her back oh you see that she moved I don't want to go too far because an inch or two might be all you need for now all right there we go it's looking a little better. It's kind of hard to see on that angle. I think we can give her one more pop. All right, let's see if she moves. Oh yeah, she's moving. She's pulling the vine off the ground. That's it. I actually now can get my finger under the pop bottle. It was touching. That's all, I'm gonna move it. There you go, she's gonna be a beauty. She probably, my goal is a thousand pounds. If I can hit a thousand pounds, I'll be happier than a pig in stink. And a nice pretty orange pumpkin with the genetics. I can't wait to grow the 1734 times the 1885 Werner. 
and stay tuned. I'll show you my little secret brew, brew coming up. The secret brew I'm using on my tomato and the pumpkin this year. All right, good luck. Be careful. Cranking them back. Here's Bubba's secret compost mix. All right, I actually didn't pay that much for it. I got it for like $52. You get a discount at the uh, hydro stores. All right, I went to the Holly Hydro. And anyways, here you go. Composting natural organic base. I looked this stuff over. It looks like very, very good stuff. All right, I'm thinking this year I slacked off, got complacent the last couple of years. I'm going to go back to using compost teas. I know Pete Vanderweilen told me he used the heck out of it, growing 1,900-pound pumpkins, 2,000-pound pumpkins, 7-pound tomatoes. So, hey, I can't go wrong. But look at this stuff here. It looks like it's a honey. It says uh, right here, I was reading it. Oh, it's got the endomycorrhiza. It's got trichoderma. Also derived from earthworm castings, bat guano, seabird guano, fish meal, crab meal, kelp meal, alfalfa meal, blood meal. Uh, let's see, bone meal, feather meal, fish, fish bone, azomite, rock phosphate. What is that? That's uh, lang langbanite, shrimp meal, insect frast, neem seed, and. Uh, is that Blue Oyster Cult? No, that's not Blue Oyster Cult. That was a band in the 70s. Oyster Shell. Okay, I need to adjust my glasses before I make a spectacle of myself. All right, here we go. Available phosphate, 1.98%. Potash, 10%. We know potash, potassium's big. That's big. Josiah Brand will tell you about pulling the potassium out of the soil to put pounds on your pumpkins at the end of the season. Calcium, here's calcium, 3.8%, 8.4%. Magnesium, which is your sulfur, your Epsom, a little of that thrown in there. So there you go. The total nitrogen is low, which I like that because I'm blasted with nitrogen. Nitrogen is only 1.85%. So anyways, basically, this is what I'm going to try this year for compost. I'm going to start feeding this to the tomato and the pumpkin starting tomorrow morning. i got a pot brewing now. Let's go to the kettle. Compost tea kettle. I have the uh, cardboard box on there to shade it against the sun. Although we're getting some cloudy weather today, it's kind of nice. I covered the plant. Sure as I cover the plant, then we cloud up. I'm still trying to give it filtered sun because the pumpkin plant is, it's pretty harsh, man. It's pretty rough. It's a rough year. So here we go. Apologize for the noise. Got the air conditioning going. Can't turn that off. Mama Bubble kicked my butt. All right, so here we go. I set this up. I took one of those five-gallon paint strainers. I put a couple pounds in there, okay, of my compost tea mix that I just showed you. And we got her bubbling. We got her bubbling and brewing. That's about 30 gallons. I had let the water set overnight and bubbled a couple hours to get the chlorine out of it before I actually put this all together. And it's not going to – it says 24 hours. It recommends like a 24-hour bubble. This is only going to have like from noon till 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So I think uh, where I went to school, that's 20 hours. Jay at the grocery shop said that's fine. 20 hours will work. You don't want to go. It's better to go a little on the low side than to brew it too long. If you start brewing it too long, it gets nasty, has a kind of an adverse reaction. So there you go. My 32-gallon can. It's going to be Bubba's pot. It's very simple. I use a Wayne's pump. I'm going to pump it out, water it in with my Wayne's pump. And there you go. Be back tomorrow morning to do that. All right, keep them growing. I'm also going to start using it on the tomato because last year I got black bottom tomatoes. So not only am I using copper and manzate on the tomatoes, I'm also going to use a compost tea, which has the calcium and the potassium. It ought to balance things out. I, I best not get black bottoms this year or something's real, real strange. All right, we're still growing, remember, in the Dairy Dew compost. All right, post any questions below, comments, and we'll, we're going to give away some seeds. I've given away a couple of the tape measures. I will announce who the winner of the tape measure is in this video, and then next video, we're giving away pumpkin seeds. I had a request on one of the comments. So uh, also, you know, request anything you'd like to see, any topics you'd like to learn about, post them up there and we'll do a video.
try out my tea and I thought, you know, I'm gonna get out the pH meter. And uh, I haven't done that this year. And the pH is showing like eight. I will take this meter down to the hydro store and have them check it for accuracy. I'm checking it, this is Daisani water. Daisani water is showing 8.8, .8. wow, almost nine. That's wow, I have to make sure this thing's accurate. That could be part of my pumpkin slowdown problem. My pH is, if these readings are true, and my pH is this high, I need to get some pH down and start watering with some lower pH. I will do that, especially even on the tomatoes. I'm sure they like a little more, much more acidic than this. All right, breaking out the big guns, trying to, uh, the pumpkin is slowed down. So I decided to break out the pH meter. And what I'm gonna do is pH my water. I put this in here the other day and the pH was like eight. Okay, eight is like really high. So what I did is I went ahead and got out my pH meter. I put it in the quick cal. It's saying that the quick cal solution is 6.85. So basically what it's telling me is that the uh, meter is set that it thinks 6.85 is actually seven, a pH of seven. So I don't have time, I'm taking Jack fishing. We're going fishing, hopefully we'll have a big fishing video for you if we catch a lunker, but if not, oh well. But here we go. I added, I'm back to advanced nutrients. They have the best pH down in my opinion. It's a little pricier, but it's three times as strong as other brands. So you use three times as less, so it goes three times farther, blah, blah, blah. The price, it's more economical in the long run. Do the math, like the rain man, do the math. All right, and then, so anyways, here we go. I will test it again after I've added the solution and we are, all right, what's it saying here, baby? 6.82, 6.92, 6.0, right, I'm no rocket scientist, but that's close enough. I'd like to see a pH a little less than seven. It looks like it's 6.5, but keep in mind, it thinks 6.85 is seven. So we're probably at about 6.7. That's good, that's a good pH. All right, there you go. There you have it. We're gonna dial it in and try to rock and roll this pumpkin and the tomato. It's mostly for the tomato. I'm gonna start pH in that tomato. All right, keep them growing. Here I was sleeping at the wheel this year and I was busy working. It was hotter than the hinges of, you know what, double hockey sticks, H-E double hockey sticks. So he didn't raise his vines. So if you look at this, your vines are right down to the ground. He didn't block them up. You got bent stems, bent vines. Okay, Eri, start cranking, baby. We got this little pocket. Yeah, we Rob, I'm... Pull her out. What's that? We're out of strap. You're out of strap. Yeah. Oh, so we're not back far enough. Yeah. All right, Beavis and Butthead, back to the drawing board. I had a dilemma. I was driving back from Gladwin, Michigan, and I got a little phone call actually a voicemail that said help i've got a worm on my tomato plants my aunt who lives on the farm where i learned how to grow giant pumpkins in the 70s has a tomato worm here's how you get a tomato worm without touching the worm all right well maybe i will have to touch it get in there but i thought i would save this for jackson get in there buddy Jackson will love it. All right, what we'll do is we'll just break the branch off. There we go. All right, Jack of Baloney, we're going fishing. There you go. One big tomato horn worm, horn worm ready for the bass pond. Coming to you. Hey, keep it a secret, but go tell a friend. Bubba's sharing home and garden tips. Worm in a jar. My aunt is hiding in the house as I am searching the tomato plant for more. She says, you gotta inspect the plant, make sure there's not more. So I told her, I said, how you look for them is, you look for the bare naked branch. That's where the hornworm has been. So when you see a bald spot, you know there's a hornworm not far away. But I don't see another one. It's okay, it's safe to come out, Aunt Carol. <laughs> she don't like them, yuck. <laughs> Not even a little bit. 
She can deliver a horse, but she can't touch no hornworm. All right, Jack will be thrilled. There you go, Jack. We're on our way to the fishing pond. All right, I'm excited to tell you the winners this week, the tape measure goes to seven shooter, seven shooter 83. You were randomly chosen as this week's winner. I picked the winners off of the 10K tomato video and also off of the uh, 30 day video. All right, we have one more special winner, Robert Tyndall. You have won pumpkin seeds of your choice. You can choose long gourd, giant pumpkin, giant tomato. I'll give you a menu. Tell me what your choice is. Email me at mark at worldwidegiantgrowers.com. I hope everybody enjoyed the videos today. Please join us. This amazing tomato keeps growing. It's unbelievable, man. I'm just excited about it. Um, it's like a five lober. And then the other one is just developing. We'll have some more footage of that next week. So please join us. And hey, remember, turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel, and comment. We'll have more seeds to give away in August. And if I get enough comments, people requesting tapes, I'll give away another tape measure. Tell me what you'd like to have, what you'd like to win. Please join us. And remember, keep it a secret, but go tell a friend. Bubba's sharing home and garden tips around the world. Join us.